girl has a story. Hey guys, it's Miss Moxie here. So as you can see, the name of this segment is The Truth About Hair because I have me a confession. Now I know a lot of you watch Miss Moxie thinking I'm some type of hair guru. You are absolutely dead wrong when it comes to that because still to this day, I. I don't know what to do with my hair. And I have to give a shout out to my homegirl slash hairdresser, one of my hairdressers, Teresa. Y'all saw her uh, cutting my bangs a couple months ago. I have to give her a shout out. But when, it, when I first moved to California and I didn't know what to do with all of my natural hair, I was referred to the woman sitting next to me to my left, Dr. Dr. Carrie Williams. Hello. Hi, Miss Moxie. <laughs> you don't understand, y'all. I'm so excited to be talking to Carrie because she was the one that taught me that secret trick of using the rods, the gray rods at the end when you twist up your hair and it doesn't have any more curls. She was the one that taught me that secret. So please do not be giving credit to Miss Moxie. Give it all to Dr. Carrie Williams. Oh, thank you, Miss Moxie. Yay. I did teach her that trick, y'all. She did. She did. Dr. Carrie, tell me about uh, your, your introduction into hair. Well, I've been doing hair my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, I was very blessed and fortunate to have a mother who wore her hair natural her whole life. So that was the example that I had in the home mm -hmm. of seeing a woman with natural hair. She started off with a short natural, and then she locked her hair when I was like in second grade. Oh, wow. um, and I just grew up doing hair. I have tons of cousins, so it just came naturally to me from my Barbie dolls to Mommy, can I do my sister's hair? So those are my first models. Those are my first clients. One thing I admire and love about your story is that you you really were like, I'm going to do this for real. And, right. and you became a doctor. <laughs> right. Well, it's interesting because I never considered hairdressing as a serious professional career. So mm -hmm. it's something that I did naturally my whole life. Um, but I also did really, really well academically. The introduction to trichology came because I was in that academic environment. So I decided, you know what, I wanna do hair as a professional career. Mm -hmm. But I, I wasn't comfortable with the idea of just being a hairstylist. Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted something more. And I said, there has to be something more than just get my license, do hair. Right. I remember reading an Essence magazine once, you know, they always have their um, hair section. Mm -hmm. And they were asking advice from a stylist, um, his name is Barry Fletcher, and under his name, it said Barry Fletcher, stylist trichologist. And I was like, whatever that is, I want to be that. Right. <laughs> Four years later, after graduating from Cal, mm -hmm. I got that phone call that said, your dissertation was great and um, you are done. You, you definitely stepped into uncharted territories here in Los Angeles, <laughs> opening a natural hair care salon. You know, it was very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going into our fourth year of business. The first year and a half, I was here by myself. Okay. And while I was working here by myself, you know, all of my peers in the industry, um, the salon owner who I worked with prior to opening up my own business, everyone said, you're going to have to get straight hair in there. You're going to just, you're going to have to do it in right. order for your business to be successful. But I refused. I mean, I had a vision. Mm -hmm. I had a goal. And just because it didn't happen right away, right. I was not going to give up. So... You know, here we are going into our fourth year. We have a studio full of master lacticians, natural hair, natural hair stylists. Mm -hmm. I knew it could happen. It, w it just took a lot of patience. And yes, there were times when I did consider, like, you know, I might just be the only natural hair stylist, you know, in my natural hair studio. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> I didn't give in to the temptation of doing that. And I'm glad that I didn't. Mm -hmm. Talk about the popularity of natural hair. It's very interesting because when I developed the idea <clears throat> of Mahogany Hair Revolution in college, um, the trend at that time was growing. That, this was back in about 2003. Okay. And I remember, you know, watching the trend and seeing how more and more women, as you said, were embracing their natural curls. And it's just a wonderful thing to see that. I want to say that, especially being here in, in Los Angeles, that the desire to do that arrives from two different things. Mm -hmm. It's one, wanting more freedom. Um, a lot of women, you know, we're becoming more active. You know, we're in this big green movement. Yeah. Green as far as preserving our environment, preserving our health. And so more and more women who um, straighten their hair, they have restricted themselves from a lot of physical activity. Yes. They're not working out as much. They're not swimming, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so for the desire of freedom, mm -hmm. they're saying, you know, I need to choose a hairstyle 
that will allow me to be more involved in an active lifestyle. Right. And so, but then also, they still want to feel sexy. They still want to be sophisticated. They still want to be able to walk into their workplace mm -hmm. and be presentable. And so, knowing that my business is able to offer that solution to women is very rewarding. And then also, as you said, having healthy hair is really important. Yes. So we have a lot of women who have been straightening their hairs for, hair for years. Um, they don't even know what their natural curl looks like because since they were three, they were getting their hair straightened. Mm -hmm. And so we're starting to see higher incidences of hair loss in women. Mm -hmm. And so once again, they beg the question, what can I do? Right. Because when I get older, I want a full head of hair. And so once again, my salon is able to offer a solution to that to say, you know, you have to put down the relaxer. Unfortunately, you can't use the hot comb anymore, but we can offer you a solution, a hairstyle where you can still feel beautiful, you can celebrate you, mm -hmm. and still feel sexy and sophisticated. Right. Which goes to the very root with a lot of black women is our, our identity is really tied up in our hair. Mm -hmm. You know, it's our crown for real. And what you're doing with this revolution <laughs> is you're you're helping so many women to love themselves their natural selves again do you do you realize that when you're doing somebody's hair and you're you're taking them from let's step away from yeah. the creamy crack and start twisting the you know your hair up do you do you realize that that powers in your fingertips yes it's, it's so rewarding mm -hmm. and I'm just humbled every day to be that vessel and the beautiful thing as I've been refining my vision for my business is as you said revolution one the definition of revolution being a drastic change but also I do a lot of children mm. and so revolution 360 a full circle like you said coming back around yeah. so not only being able to help women get back in touch but to see the new generation of small girls who don't have the experience never knowing what their curls look like, mm -hmm. but starting from the very beginning so that they grow up with this sense of confidence, yeah. this sense of identity, and being proud of their curls. So if, if they get older and they choose to straighten or experiment, it's not um, coming out of a place of insecurity, just a place of celebration to be able to say, my hair is versatile. Yep. And I can wear my twist, but if I want to wear my hair straight right. or flip it today, I can do that. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, my hair is healthy. That's right. Now, <clears throat> you also have mahogany, the original woop wop, but because you know, you know what it is, and you're a, a businesswoman, right. okay? <laughs> right. You opened up a second salon. Tell yes. me about Mahogany 2. Well, Mahogany 2 um, came out um, because a lot of women started to stumble upon my website, search me out, and they love the idea that I focused on healthy hair. Mm -hmm. Um, but once again, these women just chose and prefer to wear their hair straight. And so they would call. I started getting a lot of calls from women who said, I love that you focus on healthy hair. Is there someone there who can straighten my hair? And, you know, com confession for me, <laughs> I went to barber school. So I didn't even go to cosmetology school. I have my barber's license, once again, because I wasn't interested mm -hmm. in straightening hair. Mm -hmm. So it's not like when they called, I could be like, you know, let me pull out my curlers and my hot irons right. and do this one time. <laughs> you know, it was just like, I, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. So because I saw there was a demand mm -hmm. and being the businesswoman I am, yes. I said, you know, I can still help women who choose to wear their hair, hair straight but still maintain my vision of healthy hair because of my degree in trichology. Mm -hmm. So I created Mahogany too to serve that need, right. to have women who wanted to wear their hair straight and wanted to wear extensions, but to know that I would then select and choose licensed cosmetologists who shared my same ideals of healthy hair mm -hmm. and not compromise right. a woman's hair because unfortunately there is a practice within Ooh, our industry. Talk about it. <laughs> where not enough attention is given to the health of someone's hair. Mm -hmm. um, it's about getting that dollar. And how fast can I get my client in and out? And so I said, you know, I want to build a business in which we celebrate all types of hair, no matter how you choose to wear it. Right. But my stylist, if your hair is weak, if it's fragile, if your hair is thinning, they're going to alert you. Mm -hmm. And they will not perform a style or a service on you if they feel like it's not going to help grow your hair, if it's not going to improve the condition of your hair. Mm. And so that's how Mahogany 2 originated. What can we do? What can, what can 
black women, a any kind of woman do to, I guess, encourage ourselves to love our, who we are? Because that's essentially, I feel like, the bottom line with what mm -hmm. your your story and to, and to work really hard yeah. to re to achieve your goals. Um, the one thing that I would I would encourage women to do is it really does start with just accepting that you are this black woman, this brown woman, and I think it does start with knowing or getting in touch with your curl pattern, I'll say, from a hairstylist's point of view. Mm -hmm. Because I deal with a lot of women who come in and they, they don't even know what their curl pattern is, and fortunately, their idea of wearing their hair natural comes from a stereotype. Mm. So there are a lot of women who are scared. They are intrigued by the idea of becoming natural, but they're scared because a stereotype around the majority of black women is that our hair is super coarse, it tangles, it's difficult to manage, but... I mean, our people that we're so beautiful and, you know, the stereotype that the dark skinned girl has a super cur coarse hair mm -hmm. and then the brown or lighter skinned girl has the softer curls where <clears throat> I have clients who are lighter and browner and they have very coarse, tightly coiled hair mm -hmm. and then the dark skinned girl's curls are loose. So we have to get rid of these stereotypes and you just have to get in touch with who you are. Right. And then once you can get in touch with you, who you are, then just accepting that. And I think, too, I mean, I think it's great that we have a lot of images yes. of celebrities and things who are getting in touch with their curls. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to tell, tell my wonderful, you know, sisters, women out there, you know, we get a lot of pictures. Mm. And, of course, Tracy Ellis Ross is the most popular. Yes. And you have to know your curl. So if you're choosing to go natural, mm -hmm. you know... You have to know it could be a variety of textures and curl patterns. And I think that celebrating and, and loving and being able to recognize someone's hair and their curls, but then also saying, you know, these are my curls and this is what my curl can do. Yeah. You know, everyone's hair is different. But it just really starts with just, you know, getting in touch mm -hmm. and start with that curl pattern. You know, even if you grow it out an inch and, you know, come see me and we can discuss what your curl can do yeah. because each curl is special, each curl is different. Mm -hmm. now, I can't leave without getting one tip mm -hmm. from Dr. <laughs> Carrie Williams about anything. It could be, what should I do? Because people always ask, what, do you wrap your hair up at night? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm tired, I go to bed. Okay, I, right. I'm like the worst person when it comes to what to do <laughs> at night. Right. But if you can give one tip, whether it be, you know, what kind of vitamins to take, to drink a lot of water. Um, well, since you were mentioning vitamins and things like that, um, a key fact and tip for everyone out there is your hair is a barometer to health, mm. meaning that your hair can detect subtle changes in your body. So for the most popular question, how can I make my hair grow more or grow longer, it starts from the inside out. It sounds cliche, but it's so true. Yeah. Um, I always tell my clients, you know, your hair is actually an organ. Now, it's not a vital organ. Mm -hmm. You don't need it to live, but it is. So that means it still requires nutrients. It still requires vitamins that travel through your bloodstream. So just make sure that you do have a great multivitamin. People always ask about hair, skin, and nail vitamins. They're fine, but if you're going to take them, still take a good multivitamin. Right. Because... You want to take care of your whole self. Well, thank you so, so, so much just for just for sitting down with me and for sharing just so much of your great energy. I really hope that you guys really just can feel that just the genuine care for hair and for black women that just radiates out of Carrie. There's more than a million ways to find out and to talk to Dr. Carrie. Um, again, Twitter, Facebook, her blog, and I'll miss Moxie. Oh my gosh. Um, so hopefully we will be seeing you guys soon and m please make sure to tune back in and thank you so much for supporting Ms. Moxie. I'm excited for where I'm going and I'm excited for the people that are joining me on my journey. So I will see you guys soon. Bye.